A name range is a name that you can assign to one or more cells, and it can be referred to in formulas. As you recall, any cell that you select, Excel has its own name, like this is column D, row 13. So up here in the name box, it's known as D13. You can go ahead and give it a name in addition to D13. And why would you want to do that? Well, for example, we've got my mini ghost hunting database. Let's say that I had other databases on the same worksheet, like maybe down row 50 over on column HH. And I want to be able to jump around from one database to the next. I don't know about you, but I don't memorize the default cell names. Like, let's see, K40 is where this database is at. But instead, let's go ahead and actually have our own names that we recognize for that database. Let me do Control Home to get back to cell A1. And with A1 selected, ghost hunting, how about we go ahead and give it a name for this cell? By coming up here, clicking in the name box, and typing over it, ghost space hunt. Now, it doesn't like spaces when you're giving names in addition to the default name. So when you hit enter, it gives you the raspberries, and we're like, oh, all right, let's try again. And go ahead and click in it, and type in ghost. Now, if you want the illusion of having a space, hit the underscore key, and then type in hunting. Go ahead and finish it off, hit enter, and it accepts it. You can see that now, instead of A1 up in the name box, it's ghost hunting. Well, you can't see it. It's kind of cut off, but nonetheless, it's there. So when I'm down on, let's say, row 48, column I, and I'm like, okay, I'd like to go to the ghost hunting database. Just come up here, click on the name box drop down arrow, and hey, there you go. Click on it. Takes you right to it. Fabulous. Now, in addition to the name that we added, it didn't forget its old name, which is A1, Excel's default name. So if I come up in here and type in A1, hit enter, takes me to the same cell. And both of these names can be referred to in formulas or functions, which we'll go over in just a minute. Now that we learned how to name a cell, we can go ahead and next name a range of cells. So for example, quarter one, if I click and drag to select it, now let me go ahead and have a ADD moment. As you recall in an earlier training video, we talked about selecting ranges, that the first cell that's transparent is the active cell of that selected range, meaning that if I go ahead and type in something, it types it in that active cell. So when I hit the tab key or hit the enter key, it doesn't tab over and the enter key keeps it within that range. So when I get to the end, hit enter, hit the tab key, it stays within the selection. So when somebody's reading you numbers off, you can say, okay, let's just focus on here. So whatever key I decide to use, especially the tab key, it doesn't jump over to the next column. Now, having said that, let me click and drag and, and do a long selection here. If you want to be able to keep your selection, but toggle between the top and the bottom of the selected range, hold down the control key and hit the period at the same time. And what it does is it takes the active cell and puts it at the end of the selected range, where this used to be gray. Now it's the active cell transparent. And if I do control period again, it moves it to the top of the selected range. So that way I can zip up to the top and go, oh, that's right, this is quarter one. I forgot what column I was in. In addition to that, if you have a different selected range, not just a column, but you actually have rows and columns, when you hold down the control key and hit the period, it goes left to right and then top to bottom. And then from the bottom corner, when I hit it again, it goes back to the left and then right back up to the top. Okay, I digress. Let's get back on target. Let me go ahead and select my range to give it a name. Come back up here in the name box and type in, let's do quarter, let's spell it out, quarter one, hit enter. There we go. Now when I click on the drop down arrow, we have two selected, well, one's a cell, one's a range. There's ghost hunting, click on the drop down arrow, quarter one, the entire range of the numbers for quarter one. Now you can do it that way, or another way to go ahead and name a cell or range of cells is after you select it, come up here and click on the formulas tab, and there we go, define names group. These are all about names. And the one that I want to show you is the define name. That gives you more options than just typing it in the name box. When I click on it, opens it up and it says, okay, we've got a name for this range and it's QTR underscore two, which coincidentally is what I have here. Well, it knows that because my database was built correctly and it can pull in the name for that range. And if you want to go ahead and delete it, name it something else, that's fine. Then the scope of it, do you want it to be available throughout the entire workbook? So if you're on sheet two and you click on the drop down arrow, to go right to it, or you want to use it in a formula function, do you want to be able to pull that in from sheet one onto sheet two? If so, then just leave the workbook. If not, then just say, okay, this is for sheet one. So on sheet two, I'll have another one that will be the same name quarter two, but that's not for ghost hunting. That's for uh, some other database on sheet two. So you can separate them. I'm going to say, just have the scope, the entire workbook. And then down below, you can add comments like, hey, like, hey, second worst quarter for ghost hunting. What's the deal? 
In any case, you can add comments, you can have the scope, you can define the name here as well, and also if you want to change what range it's referring to, click on its collapsible dialog box button, you get the marching ants. You can click and drag and select a new range. I'm not going to do that. Just hit enter to pop it back open and click okie dokie. And now we have quarter two, quarter one. Let's do another. Let's click and drag and select this range, but use a different feature. Let's come back up here to the define names. And this one's create from selection. Now, in order to do this, I need to select more than just the range here. I need to actually select the label because when I'm creating it from selection, it doesn't automatically pull in the label like the define name feature did. It needs to be pointed out. And so the label for this range here is QTR3. So that's what we need to do in order to use this shortcut, create from selection, click on it, and then it automatically has top row identified as your label. So the top of this selection is going to be the name for that range. If you're good with that, you don't have a choice. Click okie dokie. And then notice what happens. Now with the selected range, if you look up here, did it say quarter three? No, because it says the first cell of this selected range is not the actual name of the range. It's the one that's below it. So when I select that, does it say quarter three? Yay, it does. You can also do that for rows. So if I come over here and I want to add name ranges for New York, Georgia, Utah, California. So everything from quarter one to quarter four, go ahead and click on create from selection. And look at that. It identified with the labels that I have for those rows by checking it off is in the left column. Cool. Click okie dokie. And so when I click and drag a range for New York, it's got New York. Oh, that's so cool. It's got Georgia and Utah and California. Now, if you want to do updates or deletions of your named ranges or named cells, then come up here to the Define Names group and click on Name Manager. And it's got a list of all the names within your workbook. You can go ahead and edit one. This is for California and say, no, it's not referring to this. Go ahead and select a different range. Make some comments if you want. Click Cancel. And so if you did want to add comments later on and you didn't use the Define Name feature, you can edit them here and update them. Or if you just want to delete one like Quarter 3, select it, hit the Delete key, click Okie Dokie, and it's gone. And then notice you can also see your comments here. And if you click on Edit, you'll be able to read them in detail. Let me click Cancel and close out. And then finally, if you want to go ahead and use that name within a formula or function, go ahead. For example, let's say we want to go ahead and add up the range here for quarter one. Let's pretend we didn't. And let's come down here and add it right here. Let's come up here on the Formulas tab and click on Auto Sum. And then if you want, you can come over here to the Define Names group, click on Use in Formula, and it has a list of all the names, the least of which is quarter one. When I select it, automatically selects the range quarter one. You can see it's right there. It's not referring to B5 through B8, the default name, but the name that we gave it. Just hit enter and cool. Or you can do it this way if you're not on the formulas tab and you don't want to click on that to get to use in formula. You can type in equals SUM, hit the tab key to pop it open. And if you remember the name, the first letter in the name, type in Q. Hey, there we go. Remember, you got your list of functions in addition to the names. And you can see the comment that we have for quarter two. Hey, what's the deal? So with it highlighted, you can just hit the tab key. It pops it open. You can see the selection. Hit enter and totally tinsel. And don't forget, you don't have to use your names. You can use the default names if you don't remember. So let's go ahead and double click. And then we can just do, let's see, C5. So type in C5. Colon means through. C8. Hit enter. Same thing. Only at least with my names. I understand that more than just a range of what's C5 through C8 again. Thanks for watching. Hey, as a quick reminder, if you like my video, please give it a thumbs up. You can also click on me and subscribe to my channel, get notified of the latest videos, and for only $2 a month, you can have access to all my Microsoft Office training videos.